It's all about Rick, baby. 100 years, 99 seasons, but it's always about Ryuk. Episode 3, Season 7 of Rick and Morty. Just finished it, and I'm going to give my thoughts and review on it. And it's an interesting one. Things are starting to shake out now, and you're starting to see, well, at least I think I see a pattern. But I thought this was a pretty good episode. I enjoyed it. Again, another kind of standalone-ish episode featuring Rick, and, and I think we'll break more into that as we go further into this. But uh, before we get there, I'm the man you may know as Z, and please like, subscribe. It helps us greatly. We do enjoy that. We do now. We have been monetized. We have memberships and super chats and thanks and things and stuff and things. So anyway, Rick and Morty. This is a Rick episode. I Let me think. Does Morty have a line in this episode? I think he has like one line. I think they're still a little bit scared. You know who else has one line in this episode? Summer. Only has one line in this episode. There is no Jerry. There is no Beth. But there is Keith David as the president. And there is Susan Sarandon as the therapist. I forget what her name is. <laughs> but the, I thought this was a good episode. Not going to lie. Connected a couple dots from the olden days. But what does seem to be happening is a troubling pattern according to mainstream media hmm this is an article from IndieWire the problem with Rick and Morty season 7 tone shift <gasps> they're like they took it back to basics um yeah that's because the last two seasons sucked <laughs> just need you to know that pretty sure um so here <laughs> This is interesting because this is the first time I'm hearing this. Typically, this was all blamed on Justin Roiland. And we know Dan Harmon has a history. But the show has also fostered an infamously toxic workplace. Really? That led to a painful split between the creators. Pretty sure they fired him because of accusations, not because of a toxic workplace. Perhaps they did. I guess the story is slowly leaking out as Dan Harmon comes out of his coma to let everybody know how he really felt about Justin Roiland. The overly long hours, unwanted sexual advances, and a hostile creative process plagued the writer's room with Roiland becoming an increasingly aloof and unpredictable presence past season four. I know we've got hints at this, but that's the first time. I've been following this pretty closely. That's the first time I've ever saw those words strung together. This is not a repeat, folks. I, I get, yeah, Royland became aloof because they were pushing him out of the writer's room because he wanted to do stuff that I guess they didn't want to do. Whatever. Uh, Royland continues to deny numerous sexual abuse and grooming allegations, and he has yet to be convicted in court, and all of the charges have been dropped, but he was still fired and uh now they're saying rick and morty is getting getting wubba lubba dub dumbed down for good and for bad first of all what we we're getting in the past in the previous two seasons were terrible and not that interesting but before we go into all this let, let's let's go back let's go over the plot the plot is is there's not a lot of plot going on but, but i thought it was good so essentially, what you have is is Rick doesn't realize it, but Rick's been ignoring his answering machine. And the state of Virginia has been compromised because it's a has a hundred percent approval rating for its governor and is only for lovers. No one else is allowed in there. And this causes the president to interrupt Rick's therapy sessions. Now, Susan Sarandon, always great, and uh, Keith David, always fantastic as the president of the United States. Because <laughs> they just totally get, they get each other's goats every single time. 
Um, but he interrupts because he's like, you never, you could never ignore the president. And they give him this whole backstory, which I would have actually liked to see a werewolf leprechaun Loch Ness monster with some sort of super disease. They replaced her, her bones with adamantium or it was like Wolverine thrown in there. But we don't get that. We we get something else. Yeah, that's right. Rick or Morty does get a line where he's like, tell that bitch just to sit quiet and don't say anything. Hi, <laughs> whatever. That's a meta joke there. So um, you also had a, a joke about interdimensional cable where there's a stabby McStabbers and stabby guy who likes to stab his audience. <laughs> I thought that was a, an okay joke. It reminds me of old school. They're trying real hard. It almost reeks of desperation of how hard they're trying to get back to old Rick and Morty. But the president believes that there's a cult, but ultimately it just seems like he's trying to get Dr. Wong's phone number. We find out that it's actually Unity who has taken over Virginia and Rick already had the remedy for it because he doesn't want to deal with her anymore because she ghosted him and he's not into it anymore. But apparently he was ignoring his answering machine. So he leaves and Unity, they cut off Unity and she can't access the hive mind of Virginia anymore. And that leaves an empty hive mind just waiting to be filled. Summer tries to talk to Rick about Unity because she likes Unity and just gets screamed at. So those are her only lines and she gets thrown out and doesn't really get to talk. So that means the president reclaims the hive mind and gets 100% approval rating because he doesn't like what his mom said to him. Uh, Dr. Wong does not want to date him. He's feeling very insecure, and that leads to a confrontation with Dr. Wong, Rick, and Unity, where Unity decides to help the United States and release all of these people, but she doesn't trust him. So they have a toxic relationship, but the doctor does say that he's been changing very slowly, but he is changing. So where does this leave all of us? I guess Unity was concerned for Rick because she found out that Rick was hunting Rick Prime. And yeah, we're hinting at lore. I would have been okay if this was just a standalone episode. They don't have to connect it to Rick Prime. I think they're doing it as a bait and switch for us because they're trying to bring us back in. They're trying to sucker us back in, but that's okay because I like the episode. It's just fine. Um, a pretty decent episode, if, if all things. I don't know if it's as good as the original Unity episodes, but this one was just fine. So let's circle back and let's see what the desperation and what I see as a pattern all of these episodes are all really centered around Rick and his relationships with everybody but Morty. Morty, his right hand, every single episode. Rick and Morty, Morty, do it. Let's go, Rick. Let's go, Morty. Let's every barely. There has yet to be a Rick and Morty episode yet in three episodes. Interesting. So the first episode. Um, how Poopy got his poop back. The Jerick trap and this one, Air Force Wong. And it's all going closer and closer. Uh, that's where they're standing. They're freestanding episodes that feel totally closer to season one. Interesting. Why are they doing this? Because they are afraid <laughs> They're afraid. They're saying, casual viewers, please come back. Please. IndieWire gave the first two season, two first two episodes of the season a C plus. I would say they're a little better than that. They're like B to B minuses. Um, the first episode's a B minus for sure. Second episode is a B a solid B. This episode was a B plus, maybe? Like they're not great episodes. They're not killing it, but they're not bad. They're they're better than mediocre. So who took the stick out of Dan Harmon's B hole? Because he was all up on himself, sniffing his own farts about the writing circle and how great he is at writing things and how fantastic he took the 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 circle like he created his own writing circle based off of the Joseph Campbell circle because he's so amazing 
and you guys know how, how many times I've ripped Harmon on this show. So we'll see. The next one's about spaghetti. We'll see. Seems like they took that from uh, Tim and Eric. They're going to have a spaghetti episode. We'll see. I don't know. Did you guys like it? What are your ratings? Are you, are you in the Bs? Are you in the Cs? Are you in the Fs? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know. Because I'm trying to figure out, if, am I right? Is there a pattern here? Are we seeing a pattern? Anyway, catch up on my other Rick and Morty rants. We're monetized. Thank you so much. We do appreciate it. Every little bit helps. And it helps us move forward to our dream of doing this show. So we do appreciate it. We also have a live stream. Our podcast, which you can catch on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, is also live stream here, 7.30, Friday nights, Eastern Standard Time, on YouTube. Shows up on other places. But we love all y'all. But I'm on to the next one. Ah.